Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaiah from the Automator. And the other day we were on a really interesting call. I think was it a Friday call that we originally started with this? Yeah, um, we started on a Friday call. Yeah. Finding an easy way to get input instead of using there's the old input box, which almost anyone with auto hockey has done, but we wanted an easy way to get input from a user. And so I forget who suggested it, but we're like, oh yeah, I do remember from years ago seeing something. I think it was on the like doing math. I think, so, yeah. You no, know, where you could do it. So why don't you go ahead and demonstrate here how simple this is. Now, this is V2 code. Right. And I think it was TK who suggested that at the first time. Like, he just mentioned it as, a, as an afterthought, really. And then uh, we started trying to look into it. And I thought, like, I have never heard about that command. Um, and now in V2, it changed a little bit. So it's not exactly the same. So what I'm going to show is the V2 version of it is better, is more flexible than the V1, according to what I understood, because the V2 one is, it has a few more options and it's an object that you can manipulate a little bit better. So the example that we're going to do is we're going to create kind of like a, a hot string here that I'm going to try to name something that makes sense, but this is too confusing. I was get user input is what I'm trying to get at, but GUI doesn't go. So get input is better, right? So. So the main point is you can have a trigger of either a hot string or a hot key or what you want, but wherever you are, you do need to be able to be like in the editor and typing, right? Like, right. So sure. well, not exactly. It doesn't matter where you are. Yeah, as but you gotta as, see. <laughs> as long as you, well, if you want to see what you're typing, yeah. But it, 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 I think this thing, it doesn't matter where you type. It's grabbing no. straight from the keyboard, no. Right, but most people would want to see, like, if you start well, yeah, typing, definitely, updated, like, you want to see, right? Exactly, <laughs> definitely. But that's the key. The, the interesting thing about the the input hook is that it's too uh, flexible. You can do very interesting things with it, which uh, I will demonstrate in a second. So, uh, we started with the hot string. We created an object called input hook. Now, there's some. There are some options that you can use here. The most important one that you want to remember first is the V option, which is making the whatever you type visible. That's basically the main idea. Now, right next to that parameter comes ending characters, which means that if I hit enter, it would stop grabbing input. Now, you don't need to do this. You don't need an ending character. Here, as you can see on line four, I'm using the start command to start the user input, to start capturing user input. And I could also have a prompt dot end to end user input. And I could have all of those in separate functions like F1 starts capturing and F, uh, F2 ends. I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm just putting them in the same prompt here. Well, in the same hot string here to make it simple, but basically, as it is an object, you can start and end it wherever, whenever you want. I don't want to use the end method, so I'm just going to say, hey, as soon as I hit enter, then stop capturing, because I don't care about anything else. So that's the cool thing about this object, that you have full control about how you want to get the information. So I'm going to start capturing, and this is the interesting thing. The next line will continue executing right away. So you can start capturing and perform other actions on your script if you want. And later on, you can check a variable called in progress. So while the input hook is gathering information, there is a property called in progress that tells you whether it's still capturing or if it ended. But instead of me having to wait for that, I just call the wait function that it will not execute anything else until you finish capturing. So that's what is going on there. Again, you have full control whether you want to wait now or whether you want to do it manually later. It doesn't really matter. So now, now that you do this, I wait for it. Then I, when you hit enter, now I can see the input, whatever the user kind of like input. Remember, is the same name as the input hook, but it's a property of the object that you just created, the input. That's it. It's, it's really simple. Let's go ahead and run it. And basically, if I uh, do GI, you see that everything disappeared. Now it's capturing whatever I'm typing. Now I say this is um, a 
test. When I hit enter, I will get the message box right away. You see that? So this is a very, very interesting object. I'm just giving you the basic information that is out there just to let you know that it exists and the basics of how it works. But if you go ahead and take a look at the documentation, you can really see how flexible this is and how cool things, how many amazing things you can do. So this is really interesting. I really like it. Um, and I will definitely would be using it in certain projects. Yeah, I would even argue if it's if you are the one that's using it, you could very simply, like you said, not use the enter key to, to where it stop inputs, but you could use the enter key as you're typing and then go parse the string you typed using the line breaks, you know, to, to grab specific things. Because yeah. I wouldn't trust a normal user for that, but I'm doing it. I have a clue what I'm doing. I'm, I'm yeah. the <laughs> but it's, it's very easy to do that. That's cool. It's very good that you actually mentioned that because one thing, and I'm showing now the, the documentation, one thing is on the options. Second are the end keys, which actually stop gathering data. But the third one is the match list. So the match list might be the one that you're referring to every time you <clears throat> um, match something, it would it would stop the, the input, but it would show you on one of the properties called end reason that it was because it matched something, not because you escaped it. So for example, I could have the end key to be escape that it just goes ahead and disregards everything or i could have a match key that if it is the enter key then it would just go ahead and uh i will parse it as you just mentioned for example but again there's a lot of things you have timeouts you want to say visible uh it's very interesting you can limit it by length it could only take five characters for example if you're capturing ids or something like that i want to capture the user ID to put it in another place. So as soon as you type your ID, if it is five digits long, it stops gathering any other information, for example. So those kind of interesting things that once you get a hang of the object about the things that you can do and the properties that you can get, you can do amazing things actually. Awesome. So go ahead and check that out. Also consider joining us on our live Friday calls. This is, I think, where the topic came up. And uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you learned something, maybe subscribe because we release a lot of great videos and it'd be a shame to miss one. Cheers. That's great. Bye.